Hello and welcome to a new episode of Mosty Engineering and another part in our Enigma build series. And today I want to talk about our clamp holders. We can see a technical drawing of it over here. And on the first glance, it looks like a relatively simple part, basically in L brackets, so easy peasy lemon squeezy. On a second glance, it gets a little bit more complicated because in order to fit the sleeve, this part has to be curved. And we see the part uh, over here, how it would sit in our CNC setup, and we have the milling bit here in blue. And this is the only way we can orient our part in our CNC in order to cut this curve over here. That also means that we can't uh, mill our countersink holes over here. And the little holes on the bottom, theoretically it would be possible to mill them on our CNC, but these holes have to receive an M1.2 thread and to pre-drill for this we have to use a 0.95 millimeter drill bit. And the way our CNC is set up, the drilling has to be the first operation. So with this tiny drill, we would have to drill to all 8 millimeters of our aluminum stock. And to be fairly honest, I'm not really sure that the drill bit will survive this. I'm relatively positively that it will break off. So we have to do this holes manually too. So that brings us to the next problem, that we have to put this tiny part and one side of it is even curved, somehow in our milling machine align it, ideally do it easy and quick in order to do the drilling, the tapping, the countersinking and all those operations. And in order to do so, we will manufacture some part holders that we can clamp in the mill and then just slide our part in, slide it to the other position and do all the operations. So let's go over to the computer and take a look out uh, on them. So, and here we have our two part holders. The part goes in the slot and rests on this pocket. We slide it to one side, drill the hole, slide it to the other side drill the other hole and then we tap the holes and we are done. Very nice. The other tool is where we are cutting on the curved surface. So the geometry is a little bit more complicated and we actually have to do it in two parts. But the principle is exactly the same. And noteworthy here is um, maybe this hole over here. And the only reason that's there is uh, because in this orientation, our end mill cutter can't do a 90 degree corner, but we still have to uh, clear this 90 degree edge over here. So we overcut a little bit in order to get the necessary clearance. Very nice. And let's go over to our actual parts. So we have them here side by side and here all our CNC actions we have to do. So first we will plane the top because we are the part is only 6.8 millimeters high but we have 8 millimeter aluminum stock so uh, we have to remove a little bit of material from the top and then we are going to clear the areas where the actual clamp will rest on. Then we cut the contour of the parts but not all the way down because this pro uh, step is only to remove the material in order to get clearance for the next steps, which are the corners. And as you can see here, for some reason I don't quite understand, the tool goes all the way down. If you know why, please let me know. And to reduce the stress during this operation, we removed the material beforehand. And we are doing uh, this four times. And then we are doing the contour again, but this time all the way down in order to cut the parts out. So let's go over uh, to the CNC and have a look at this. So here you can see our setup and the CNC in action. And you see you don't really see uh, that much, but it's doing exactly the motions I explained a second ago. So let's enjoy this for the second and then go over to the finished parts.
So, and here we have our CNC clamp holders over here. Overall, they came out really nicely. Just the surface finish is not as good as I would hope for. So we have some clearly visible tool marks over here and here on the curve. But to be fairly honest, just a couple of wipes with emery paper will take care of that. So, and here we have our first solar, the one for our threaded holes. And the part will just go in like this. We slide it to one side, drill the hole, then just slide it to the other side and drill the other hole. Here, uh, we have a little set screw to secure the part. So let's just do that. So now the part is rock solid. Uh, the only problem with this is that uh, this little hole over here won't be accessible when it's clamped into our milling vise. So let's uh, loosen our set screw just slightly so that the part is able to slide back and forth, but it's not able to move backwards. So that's now ready to go very nicely. And then we have our other holder that comes in two parts. So we have a really nice uh, machining pattern over here. But the real beauty of this part is just how well they go together. So they slide together in any position with no effort whatsoever. But when they are in position, they are just rock solid. There's no movement whatsoever. So the tolerances on here are just perfect. Really nice. And then the part will sit in like this. You slide it to one side, drill the hole, slide it to the other side, drill the hole, then change to the countersink bit, countersink the hole, slide it over, countersink the other hole. And we are basically done with our part. So let's go over to the mill and just do that. So and here we have the first tool set up in the wires. Uh, the tooling is here because I don't have parallels, so we can take them off now. And I have our engraving bit in that's uh, like this. And we will use this then for our countersink bits because a normal countersink bit is way too big. And here we have the 90 degree angle as well. So that should work. But now we are going to use this bit in order to find our position, what I already marked. And now we are going in and finding our position. What is by eye is good enough in this instance. And the tip of the tool makes this process a lot easier. Yeah. So this position fits very nicely. Then we can raise the tool again and switch for our drill bit. And we will put our part in position and then lower it. We get as slow as our machine can. And of course, a little bit of cutting fluid. And then we go slow and steady. Let's check. Yeah, we are definitely uh, through. Clean our hole loss so that no um, ship is destroying our positioning. And then we put it in to the other side. Again, a little bit of cutting fluid. And then we have our part. So and here we have the same uh, setup. The positions are already dialed in. So let's go. Drop of cutting oil. Holding this piece down.
and now we should be through. Oh, very nice. So let's remove all uh, the little ships. Do the other side. So let's put it in. Cutting oil. And this time I hold it in a position that you can see what's going on. So very quick check of this and let's do the other part. So that's our countersink bit uh, now. And we are going to position the bit right on um, top of our path. And now we are going 0 0.8 millimeters down. And yeah, that looks good. Here we have the finished part. Looks good enough. And then we do the other one. So, and here we have our finished parts. Looks really nicely. I did uh, some things off camera. So the first thing I did was send down the surface because it was actually a little bit too thick. So we sent it down to the required one millimeter thickness and then also I'll polish the underside so that the ring has a nice surface to glide on. Uh, the problem with this operation uh, is it I should have done this before we drilled all the holes because actually this was our reference surface so because of this the holes here are now slightly too low. Shouldn't be a big problem should still be within our tolerances but yeah, for the next time, keep the order and operation in mind. And then on the second part, I already fitted the clamp to our clamp holder. The little copper wires over here are just replacement for the washers I don't have yet. And another change I had to do is that these are actually M1.6 screws and not the planned M1.2 because actually uh, this is the smallest size I can get my hand on. So we have to take this, shouldn't be a big problem uh, either. So all that's left to do now is uh, fitting our clamps to the sleeve. So we have the sleeve over here, just put it in here and then screw it down. But I'm going to do this off camera because this will be an awfully fiddly, fiddly job. So see you in a second. So, and here we have our rotor so far. So we have our clamp fixed over here. Our clamp holder works nicely and we have the second clamp holder over here. And both of them hold the ring in position. The digit ring still moves, so that works. Slightly too tight, but this is probably due to the fact that our countersink holes are slightly too low but we will fix this in the next iteration and our from this it looks really nicely our rotor is mostly done all that's left to do now here are the pins and to be fairly honest there are a lot of pins and to make our job a little bit easier with the pins we are going to do some improvements for my life and this will be our next video until then, uh, if you have questions, comments, as always, let me know down below. And I try to answer them as quickly and correctly as possible. Then do the usual YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, etc. And all that's left to say now is thanks for watching and see you guys the next time. Bye bye.